Have you actually read some EVPs lately? Here, here, let me read you a couple. We strive to be the best at what we do. Okay. Uh, we have a smart, ambitious team dedicated to delighting our customers. All right. We are an industry pioneer that's been leading the way for decades. These are not employer brand messages. These are consumer messages. Here, let's keep looking. We believe our winning culture sets us apart. Okay. We have a phenomenal culture and unparalleled drive. Okay. Our team is high powered and committed. Really? You're the only team with winning culture and unparalleled drive or high powered? Okay, this isn't useful information. Let's keep looking. We love what we do and we strive to do the best work we can each day. All right. When smart people work on intriguing problems and they enjoy coming to work each day, they accomplish great things together. Is it, is, did people who actually work there read these or help write these in any way, shape or form? Or is this just some sort of press release from leadership? This is, this is a spin job. And, and if you think I'm cherry picking just the worst examples, everything I'm reading is coming from Biltin's list of 24 EVPs that are inspiring. Imagine if we described people this way. Cornell Rooker has an exceptional record as a U.S. attorney, a, a leader in fighting employment discrimination, was college chair of, a, he's tough on crime, he's fair on justice. That's the line, say that. Do not say that. What the hell is that? He's tough on crime, he's fair on justice, sings a song, has a mustache? What is that supposed to say? Toby's gone to the zoo. Yeah. And that, that, that is how most EVP sounds. They just don't work. How is a candidate expected to use that information to choose their next role when everybody sounds like a, a commercial or sounds the same or just sounds way too good to be true. To be useful and viable, we need our EVPs to well, help attract the candidates we actually want to hire. We need to help them choose us over all the other companies. And let's be honest, that is not what candidates are getting. So how do we fix broken EVPs. Rather than treat an EVP as a laundry list of nice things that you want to say about your company, we need to think about what it looks like from a candidate's point of view. We need an EVP that speaks to them because well, that's what it's supposed to do. And what do candidates care about? Well, a lot of things actually, but you knew that. Things like, uh, is the work remote? What kind of hours are they? Or is it a high pressure environment? Is it a kind of collaborative supportive environment? What's management like? What is the purpose for the work? What's the mission? What are the bonuses like? What's the opportunities for advancement or promotion? There's lots of stuff there. And to make things more complicated, candidates weigh all of that information differently. Some people are all about the salary. They will take the highest salary regardless of where it is and regardless of anything else. That's the only thing that matters to them. Some people care about the mission and making sure that the work they're doing is something satisfying and fulfilling and something that serves them in a larger sense. Some people it's all about what's the experience of just being at work? What's the work-life balance? None of those questions are being answered in a normal EVP, at least as far as I can see. That means there's a huge opportunity here for you. While most companies, and that includes your biggest and scariest competitors, well, they throw out high-minded platitudes and clever, but let's be fair, meaningless taglines. You, you can be the one with an EVP that speaks to what candidates actually want to know. These are EVPs that are not only quicker and easier to build, but they're more effective. So let's throw out the usual model of building a, a glorified press release as an EVP and think about giving candidates what they need to make a more informed decision. So here's how we build EVPs that actually work. There are three things that every candidate cares about when they're looking at a new role. The goal, the experience, and the reward. Let's break those down. The goal. Okay, so what is the company trying to achieve? Is it the team or is it the role? What, what's the purpose of this job? What is it trying to do? Now the goal might be giving glasses to everybody in the world who needs them. The goal might be making piles of cash. The goal might be saving the whales. The goal might be making a fiber optic telecommunication system to enable amazing technologies. Maybe it's just letting people watch whatever movie they want whenever they want. These are all company goals, what the company was set up to do. Now the goal doesn't have to be some sort of moral or social good. It's not a charity per se. It's just getting super clear on what the company is all about. The experience. What's the day-to-day -day work? 
what are the actual experiences of being in that job? Is it collaborative or is it competitive? Is it move fast and break things? Or is it we go farther when we go together? Is it safe and steady or is it making big bets? Is it hierarchy? Is it camaraderie? Can you tell the boss that you think they're wrong or do you learn to shut up pretty quick? These are all the things that people wanna know about the company. Now, some people might refer to all that stuff as the culture, and I get that, but the word culture is so laden, it's, it's, it's a Pandora's box of distractions that doesn't serve this conversation. All we really wanna do is describe the experience of working in this role at this company. Third, the reward. What do you get as a candidate in return? I mean, obviously salary is a big part of this, maybe so is bonus, but don't forget, opportunity to work on amazing projects, a potential amazing clients, title, status, uh, recognition, opportunities to learn and professional development. All of those things really are how we are rewarded for doing good work. So in short, an EVP should answer three simple questions. What are we doing? How do we do it? What do we get when we get there? Simple as that. Now this probably sounds like some crazy shift, some sort of wild deviation from the norm. And I get that, but it's what great recruiters do every day already. By embracing it, you're connecting what works with recruiting and TA, with what works with marketing, without having to, I don't know, pull something out of thin air that doesn't make anybody happy. That's what the candidate actually wants to know about the job. I mean, sure, they're thrilled to see your values, and I'm sure their your EVP is very, very nice, but ultimately what they want to know is, what are we doing, how are we doing it, what do we get when we get there? Answering those three questions is really what your EVP should be based on. Now here's the twist. To get people to choose, because that's what we're trying to do, they need to see a difference between alternatives. If I go shopping and I'm looking for laundry detergent and I see Tide and I see All and I don't know the difference between the two, how do I choose? Well, I'd probably go with the cheapest one. Probably you would too. There needs to be a clear and obvious reason to pay a premium for either one. And without that clear and obvious reason, I'm gonna to default to the cheap. That means you gotta define how you're different. It's the same for jobs. If you're trying to choose between two roles and they each talk about, I don't know, having a great culture and being a winning team and being a fantastic or marvelous place to work, how do you choose? Chances are you choose based on salary. But if you're a company that can clearly and specifically show how you are different, you don't have to pay that kind of premium on new talent. Now what's interesting here, this three category model, is that you don't have to be different in each of the three categories. You really just have to be specific and unique and different in one. The model's there to make it easier for you to see the ways in which you are different in terms that candidates actually care about. Maybe you've got a really interesting goal. You're doing something that no one else or trying to achieve something that no one else is doing. Maybe you offer some interesting perk or benefit for people in the work experience. Maybe you have an interesting way of rewarding people. When you define your EVP in terms of goal, experience, and reward, you are speaking the candidate's language. This is the information they are desperate to find and is the information that 99% of EVPs don't bother sharing. I know I'm making this sound way too easy. I admit it, it's, it's not how it is. It takes work to figure out how you're different. It takes commitment to clearly communicate it to the world without trying to spin everything. But if you do it, if you build your entire talent strategy around everything that makes you different as an employer, you will have a significant and meaningful advantage. You will be the only company talking to candidates about what they actually care about. So if you're wondering why your EVP hasn't actually become the solution to all your hiring problems, you know, the way you were promised, it might be because your brand isn't doing the job properly. It's not showing how the, you're different. Focus on what candidates are actually desperate to know about you, and you will build a pipeline of talent that will not fail. Interested in learning more about how you can reinvent your talent strategies and recruiting processes to be more effective? Well, I've got a lot of content here on YouTube. Check out a bunch of videos about your employer brand and how it can be more effective. Or you can subscribe to my newsletter, The Change Agent. It's designed for TA leaders just like you who know that recruiting has to be better somehow, that we can reinvent it and make it work. Just check out thechangeagent.news and subscribe today.